Hey, welcome to another edition of Kyle Meredith with. It's the interview series presented by WFPK at WFPK.org. Consequence and the Consequence Podcast Network. Thank you so much for checking out the series as always. You know the drill. If you like what you see, hit that subscribe button. I do three new interviews every single week. So it's a great way to keep up with all of your favorite artists. I am so excited today to be talking to Carla Gugino. How are you? I am really well. I'm so happy to be talking to you too. Yeah. Um, I, I really love what you guys do. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, I love what you do and, and have for probably, uh, from what it seems like, the, at least the majority of your uh, your film career, <laughs> leading up to this new one with Gunpowder Milkshake, which I had so much fun watching last night. I mean, what a beautifully shot movie with yeah. just so many moments of, oh my God, I can't believe that's how that person died over and over and over. I know, I know. I know, it is, it is, but it is a visual feast, which I think, is also um, noticeable, you know, mm -hmm. because I think there's naturalism is wonderful and there's a lot of, of room for that and there's a lot of that being done um, or things that have a lot of visual effects. But there are, it isn't that often that you get something that's super sumptuous visually um, that is just, you know, the just old fashioned movie magic in that way. Yeah. When you get a script like that, I mean, is it explained to you like the movie is going to look a certain way as well? Well, you know, um, Interesting, Navot, who is our, our illustrious writer and director, is wonderful. Um, you know, he's from Israel, and he his first movie, Big Bad Wolves, was they're, they're sort of it's a country that genre movies don't necessarily usually come out of. And I think he was super influenced by Quentin and by Robert Rodriguez and people that I've either collaborated with or know really well. So there was a, an aesthetic that I think upon our first conversation, he sort of knew that I would get and that we had a lot of cinematic references that were immediately made me understand what he was wanting to do with this. And even on a script level, and even you can tell from the, the title, it's um, there was a sense already that it would be heightened and mm -hmm. that there would be sort of homages to um, wonderful filmmakers that precede him. Um, but also that he had a really strong take of what he wanted to do. Um, and throughout shooting, it was that way. Um, you know, uh, he just has a really super strong visual sense. And, and it's fun. It's fun to do a movie like this where, as you said, the action is, is crazy. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that's, that's fantastic and, and super fun to do and to watch. Um, but also there is this, and I think part of it was kind of maybe who he cast in it as well. Um, there's like a real lineage and heart to these women um in the midst of this sort of badass action movie and i love that juxtaposition yeah i, I mean everybody in this cast you know 100 110 percent does that change things like when you have this many notable actors on the screen all the time like does that change how you like because i guess you've only got such a finite amount of time to establish a character against all these yeah, other totally. characters like what did you want to do yeah, no, it, it was interesting because I think uh, my challenge in particular and, and perhaps the challenge of, you know, uh, I mean, Angela, Angela and Michelle and I was that in a relatively small amount of screen time, we had to establish a lot of relationship um, and uh, and kind of the difference between these three women and, and why they've been able to live together for so long. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, and so I was really taken with Madeline. I was into the idea that um, and I kind of like you know, pitched it to Navalt, like, what if she is the one who is really, um, has this connection to the library and to literature and to books and to history in that way. And that maybe even she's sworn off of violence for a while. And it's not until there's a kid in the library that needs to be protected that she will stop at nothing. Um, and so that was a really fun thing to play with this sort of slightly prim and proper idea. And then usually, as we know, it's the wallflowers that are, you know, there's a lot going on there. Yeah, I mean, the, the no cussing rule once the kid is around is yeah. hilarious and plays so well on this. Uh, and, and, and the famous authors, I mean, you, you're talking about the, uh, the connection to the library. I mean, yeah. I was thinking, you know, it, this is not a kid's movie per se, <laughs> but, um, yes. but I think for some people, like, you know, this, this could be one of those gateways to learning about some of these. Like, it's just an extra level that I think the movie gives you. Well, you know, it's interesting because we we sort of found in the moment, um, uh, I, I kind of had the thought that I wanted her, like not only should she have these books that are filled with, you know, kick-ass weapons, but also she needs something to read. And uh, and that was something that Navalt really grabbed onto and said, yes, we've got to do that. And it's funny because people have been really responding to that. And I think it is, it's those little things that you and I know, like when you're a kid 
And, you know, and again, like you said, this isn't really a kid's movie, but it's kind of a reminder for all of us, which, and granted, we know kids will be watching this movie. Sure. There. Um, <laughs> if I was a kid, I'd be watching this movie. <laughs> but, um, but, you know, it's, it's, uh, it is that reminder that those little things make a difference, you mm -hmm. know? Um, those things like you'll never forget like you'll be like oh I should just bring a book along on my next trip you know right I mean the th it is it's just the things you learn when you're not really paying attention when you don't exactly. know that, that they come your way and and I'll tie that into because um the soundtrack you know th there's some really like maybe your quintessential moment right the pivotal moment of your yeah. character here comes Janis Joplin yeah you know perfectly soundtrack to this thing I mean yeah. what what a scene to play up against, you know, with a, with a track like that. I know. Well, it's cool because, you know, also, as we know, a movie's made three times, you know, it's the script form and then the filming of it. And then the third, the editing and the post and, and what can be made in that third movie is so huge. So to give me for a sequence that I already loved, Janis Joplin, <laughs> I'm like, I mean, I, you can't get a bigger gift than that, you know? Yeah. Um, it's funny how that is. I mean, music, and I think it is appropriate to talk about because you are consequent of sound. It's like, it's such a, um, this show I did called Jet is uh, where I play a thief. And it's, uh, it's just now streaming on HBO Max. They just, it's just become available. So it's become available to a much bigger audience, which is super exciting because I love the show so much. But, um, but in that, there's a key sequence with a Giancarlo Esposito and I with Nina Simone. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it feels a little bit like a cheat when you get to go, wow, I have this scene partner that is, you know, no longer with us, maybe even, but like, just giving everything. Right. So I feel to me, music is music is the thing that gets you emotionally to a place faster than anything. I mean, I make a playlist for all my characters and um and and I think always, as you know, like if you pull the movie out of the music out of a sequence of a movie, you could it's the difference between move, being moved to tears or not, you know, mm -hmm. incredible. Yeah, I mean, over my my shoulder on this side, it's just a wall of well, mostly soundtracks. I, I know, it, and I was just I was just also thinking, like you know, like Bowie. I mean, just mm -hmm. this guy, because the amazing thing about Bowie to me, more, I mean, first of all, the obvious is just he's just the best. There's no just nobody sure. who can compare. But secondly, that he was such a curator. He was such a curator for so many people. Like he would find people he loved, novelists or artists, or and he would start talking about them or bringing attention to them. And I think that's things that that's a great gift that artists can give to other artists. Right. And he always did that in such a generous and amazing way, and then informed a lot of us about things I wouldn't have ever known about. You know. Yeah. No. No. That's that's completely true. I mean, uh, maybe Iggy would have done it on his own, but uh, I mean, he yeah. you know he saved Iggy's. I mean, and, and there's a lot of those that go through there. But I've done the same thing. I mean, with Bowie, with so many bands, you know, kind yeah. of when you when you search in the liner notes. I mean, that's when you totally. start opening up the world. By the way, are you also just dying for your next concert, like to actually go to a concert? So I've been lucky to see just a couple around here in town. Um, oh. We've we started a few of them around here in town, but yeah, like it's kicking in. Like I'm I'm heading to see the um, oh gee, I mean there's so many. I, I think I'm most excited about the uh, Atlantis Garbage Liz Fair tour because yeah, I know, you know I'm, three and one. That's like so amazing. And also, by the way, Wilco and Sleater Kinney are mm -hmm. together. Perfect. Like that's amazing. Now you saw the Sparks movie, uh, yeah. Edgar Sparks movie recently. What did you think? I haven't seen yeah. it yet. It's so good. Yeah. Um, it's funny because, uh, you know, I mean, they are so, so, so prolific. Um, and uh, it was interesting because I'm a big fan of theirs and I'm also a fan of Edgar's. And uh, um, so I knew that I was going to see it anyway. And the fact that then I got to be at the Alamo Draft House, which is my favorite theater in the country in Austin, was just sort of the icing on the cake. But, um, but what's really interesting about it is the two of the people that I went with didn't know Sparks at all. Uh -huh. And the movie even works for them because I think what's so um, compelling about it is just somehow the fact, the reminder that whatever your passion is, is the thing that's going to drive you through life much more so than any kind of recognition you get for that thing. And somehow they, maybe because of, you know, just who they were born as, or maybe because they have each other, or maybe because they're just insanely talented, they um, really stuck with their vision of things. And so to see, you know, and it's also for me, I mean, I've been acting since I was 13 and, you know, it's, it's a huge majority of my life. And so it's cool to know that like, maybe the best is even yet to come, even mm. though I've had a career that I love. It's like, just to see them in this moment where they also, you know, just wrote 
um, Annette, is it? Annette? Right, Annette, yeah. yep. Annette, and you know, I mean, it's, it's, just, it's just super exciting. So for me, it was, um, I was really moved. And then I was also like, all I'm playing at home is Sparks right now. Like, it's just me and my boyfriend are just like, I'm like, we're got, we got to get out of Sparks soon, but we're just excited. So. <laughs> uh, I've had them on my show a few times and, and there's so much fun to talk to and, and, and you know, it just kind of fits in. Yeah, with the zone. I, I, was, I was looking through this too, and, and some of your stuff, like I, I should ask while we're on the subject, like being a Sparks fan, that's not for everybody, I will say, right, though, right. Sparks Music. What was your coming of age music? Like, what was it for you that when you look back that really set it off? You know, it's weird. I actually have it minor bizarre, like kind of like my life. I, I lived in a teepee with my mom and Big Sur and I lived like in a house in, you know, with a tennis court and went to Europe in the summers with my dad. Right. It was like super discordant, but also awesome. And probably part of the reason that I, I chose the profession is I was either going to be schizophrenic or like an actor. Um, but um, so, so there was a lot of Cat Stevens. There was a lot of Neil Young. There was a lot of that kind of like seventies, quote unquote, you know, hippie kind of. Mm -hmm. um, and then I really got into later. Um, I was like the cure Oingo Boingo. Um, uh, and then there was, and then there was like, you know, then there's like the Liz Fair um, uh, sort of phase of um, Mazzy Star. I got really into for a period of time. Um, you know, it's it's weird. It's like I, I kind of do go across the the gamut, mm -hmm. um, and uh, and I kind of feel about music the way that, and you know, and and for example, like right now, I think Lana Del Rey is actually in terms of pop music um, and popular pop music, just writing. Um, her lyrics are always so impressive to me. Mm -hmm. um, I think she's so good. But I, I, I tend to be the same way I am a little bit with movies is like, if everybody likes it, somehow I'm, I don't necessarily gravitate in that direction. I don't think it's a rebellious thing, but maybe it is deep down. Um, so I kind, of, I kind of always love, like, even if it's not completely my thing, I love somebody doing their own thing. That's like kind of what turns me on in terms of art. Yeah, I think everything you've mentioned is probably also over my shoulder over here. So yeah. <laughs> you, you and I, we, we, we can talk, we can, yeah, we're on the like same that. level on, yeah. on that right there. That's good. And, and we have a mutual friend. I don't know if she's still your friend, but Jenny Lewis, uh, oh, you know, who you've yes. had, had some, your own history with there too. I'm she a big fan of there. So, yeah, she is so good. We actually hadn't seen each other a while and we crossed paths at a very dear mutual friend's house, um, a few years ago in Austin, Texas. And, uh, I mean, she's just so good, you know. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Courtney Barnett is another person that right now I think is like killing it. Um, but Jenny, it's it's so fun to watch her. You know, she really did kind of just not wasn't interested in acting after we acted together uh, in uh, True Beverly Hills so many years ago. And it's so cool when you see someone change like pivot like that, and then you're like, oh, that's why, because right. this is your calling, you know. <laughs> uh, it does make sense. I mean, for the roles that you've done. I mean, I, I was trying to put. Labels, labels, whatever, but uh, it's like enhanced reality always seems to be some part of what you do. I mean, whether it's, you know, in this new one with Gunpowder Milkshake, yeah. I mean, I loved even the haunting, you Thank know, you. the haunting movies that's been on Netflix. I mean, just everything you've done, it does like, maybe it's the same thing you're saying for the music, but what draws you to this type of world, this cinematic world? Uh, I know it is interesting that it's not that I, I also love naturalism. Um, and I think funnily enough on stage, like on Broadway, I've done a lot of uh, real classics and things that are um, so different, but there is something, it is true that I think there's something that I love about a heightened reality. And I think that in a strange way, so often through um, a more heightened genre, you can tell the truth <laughs> without mm -hmm. being too earnest. I don't know. It's a weird um, it's it is it is an interesting thing. I, I think also because maybe because there's a magic to me in in when I went into a movie theater the, for the first time uh, as a kid, and I don't think I ever really because I was a really cerebral kid. I don't think I really lost myself until I saw a movie, and then I was like, at two hours later, I was like, who am I, and what you know, what just happened? And I think that part of it um, maybe that's why I do sort of love. The heightened nature of things. I don't know. Mm. It's a good question, and I don't really have a, an honest answer for it. Um, other than, I guess you could say that I have done a lot of that material. Yeah. Well, I mean, it is. It's it's so imaginative. I yeah. mean, uh, I guess that's why I've been a fan for so long. Um, all of my favorite actors are the ones I can trust to pick a good script. You know. Yeah. Oh, I appreciate that. You know, it's funny. It's like I I I also think that from such a young age, I wanted to be a 
transformational actor. I wasn't ever interested in, and by the way, I love watching the people who are movie stars who kind of play themselves in that way, but I always wanted to sort of be like the character actor that maybe by default became a movie star, but like mm -hmm. not, you know, that wasn't the, the place, again, the, like the thing that really like galvanizes me personally. And, uh, but in, in doing so, I think it took like a solid 20 years for people to be super confused and be like, wait a minute, are the, the lesbian parole officer in Sin City, but the mom and spy kids and that, you know, like, how does this all work together? And, uh, and then finally, it was like considered a body of work, right? <laughs> which I think only comes with age, <laughs> but I'll take it, you know? You stick uh, around and that's eventually what happens. Then exactly. you get it. Yeah, no. Well, I, I certainly appreciate it. Uh, Carla, thank you so much for taking the time to, to talk about it. Uh, Gunpowder Milkshake is so much fun. And as you mentioned, Jet is now out there as well. Uh, that's my next thing. I haven't seen it yet, but uh, I, oh. I, saw, I watched the trailer yesterday and I was like, Very okay, cool. so this is what we're doing next. Uh, I hope you enjoy it. I think based on our conversation, you will dig it. Awesome. I'm yeah. looking forward to it. Thank Have you so much for taking the time. It was great, great talking time. with you. You too. All right, bye. bye.